the time clock again, no fooling. We have a marvelous new sponsor this year, friends, and our show is going to be different, too. Many of the old gang will be back for this series, including Elmer Blurt and his knock, this time with his little brother Orson, Arlene Harris and the chatter, Carl Hoff and his music. Oh, and say, we have a fine new tenor you'll be interested to hear. His name is Don Reed, and I'll bet you my junior G-man badge is going to like him. Our new announcer is that popular Mike man, Gary Breckner. Oh, and another surprise that we feel is really a novelty is me and her merry men. And that isn't all. While we were off this summer, we got hold of that 300-pound, jovial, lovable character, the man you've all heard on the last line of program last series, Billy House. <laughs> Well, I right. Thank you, friends. Thank you, and thank you, Al, for that train ticket out here from Chicago. Well, I was sorry, uh, Billy, but I wasn't down to the station to meet you. That's all right. The baggage master was there. Well, what do you have to say? He said, roll out the barrel, and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, the truth is, we got Billy on our show for a ridiculous figure. And he sure has. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Billy, welcome to our new Dole Pineapple Juice program. Thank you, Alan. Glad to be here. Our star is a little late getting here. You see, I had that same old stomach trouble of mine. Oh, uh, stomach trouble? Yeah, couldn't get it through the door. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have the uh, well move for you, I'm sure. Say, I want you to meet some of the members of the gang. I I'd like you to meet uh, Carl Hoff. Billy, meet Carl, will you? Mm. Well... Brian George, it's mighty nice to see you, Carl Hall. Well, it's a pleasure, I assure you, and might I add that we've all been anticipating your appearance with great anxiety on this program, and we're all here to help you at all times. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's mighty sweet of you, Carl. Oh, but that doesn't begin to express our deep appreciation of your talents and ability to create fear and happiness amongst men, and if there's anything at all I can do for you, don't fail to call on me. Thank you. <laughs> well, I've got some socks that has to be done. Thank you. <laughs> I'll be glad to darn them, thank you. Uh, thank you. Well, thank you. Well, as far as that's concerned, thank you, too. <laughs> well, thank you, too. All those, uh, thank you, thank you. Well, thank you, thank you. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, you thank you. Huh. <laughs> You've got me one down, Luke. Uh, 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 listen, uh, what do you, you think you want to make something out of it, huh? Now, now wait, wait just a minute, you fellas. Let me interfere, if I may. This is no way to start off a new show by fighting. Especially big artists like you ought to be seeing yourself. You two are the highest paid men in radio. Oh, so he's working cheap, too, huh? <laughs> Now, uh, 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 please, fellas, uh, stop it, will you? Let's, let's make our show different from, from any on the air by not having any feud. Okay, Al. Well, that's all right with me, too, Al. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you. And yeah, thank you. Now, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Make it up, fellas. Don't start that all over again. We're all waiting to hear Carl's arrangement of an apple for the teacher. Oh, Al, please don't let him play that. Oh, Al, you can't. On, 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 no, no, and on my bended salary, I asked you, Al, please. <laughs> Please, Al, I'm asking you, don't let him play an apple for the teacher. Why not? Oh, I don't I'll work cheaper, and that's impossible, but don't let him play apple for the teacher. Well, why not? Because if you let him play the apple for the teacher, all the college students in the country will commit suicide. Well, uh, how do you figure that? Well, because apples have worms. Mm -hmm. and, and if you give an apple to the teacher, there won't be any worms left to fish with. And if you don't go fishing, how are you going to feed your cat? And if the cats don't have any meat, they'll die. 
with a cat storm, the mice will run all over the country. You can't let that happen, so you'll have to have something like the Pied Piper of Hammond to get rid of him. He plays the clarinet. Who are the best clarinet players in the world? Benny Goodman and Artie Shaw. Mm -hmm. If they're busy leading the mice out of town, there'll be nobody to lead their swing bands. And if there are no swing bangs, the college kids will have nothing to do, so they might as well suicide. <laughs> <laughs> well, you come on with me. I'll take care of you. for that nice number. You just heard from the production of Star Maker, a pineapple for the teacher. I mean an apple for the teacher. <laughs> I've got Hawaii and pineapples on the brain, I guess. But I know something about Hawaii. I know what a wonderful place it is. How nice and friendly and hospitable the people are. You know, my own sister told me that last year when her boat was leaving Honolulu, she just had to break down and cry. She thought that perhaps she was a little too sentimental when, until she looked around and saw everybody else crying, too. They all realized that they were saying goodbye to a new friend that they'd learned to love in such a short space of time. In such a friendly atmosphere lived the people who produced those pineapple juice. And by the way, they don't just can this pineapple juice. They grow every pineapple they use in it themselves. They plant them, take care of them, and test them to make sure they're just right before they pick them. When the juice is pressed from the ripened pineapple, you can in a spotless cannery in Honolulu, while the pineapples are still in the same perfect condition as when they were picked. So that's how I know Gold pineapple juice is just about as perfect as anything can be. That, and the fact that I've been drinking it long enough to know that you can't beat it for taste. Well, golly, well, here I am rambling on. But you try some gold pineapple juice, and you'll see exactly what I mean. All right, Gary? Well, you all know Elmer Blitz, the low-pressure door-to-door salesman. Well, this year he's introducing a new character in his younger brother, Orson who needs trying to teach, uh, teach to become a salesman. Too, I'll settle for two. That's all I would mean. In fact, I've always wanted that word, too. Put it in the dictionary. <laughs> well, uh, good luck, Elmer and Orson. <laughs> Go on, have fun. Well, Orson, it's time for me to teach you to be a new salesman. <laughs> this is our first sale together. Uh, let's, let's try this White House here. And, uh... If the lady's home, this would be a good chance. Now, look, to be a salesman, don't forget, you got to be smart. Oh, Chuck, yeah, I'm pretty smart. Smart as you are. Uh, in school yesterday, I got an A in spelling. Uh, you got an A in spelling? Uh, then why did you fail? Well, because uh, I found out later, there ain't no A in spelling. <laughs> <laughs> You keep your mouth shut and pay attention now while we try this front door. So there's nobody to home this house today, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. Well, 
Well, what do you want? Oh, gosh. Uh, uh, don't get me wrong, lady, but I'm... Yes, yes, go on. Uh, I'm a <laughs> corset salesman. <laughs> hey, uh, who is that little boy with you? Uh, uh, that's my little brother. He's learning the business. Uh, his name is Orson. Orson? Well. No, Orson Blake. <laughs> <laughs> well, enough of this nonsense. Uh, what kind of corsets are you selling? Oh, uh, here's Blake's saddle belt corset for paddle state money. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, here's our no embargo model. No embargo model? Yeah, it allows free movement of the arms. And, uh, <laughs> Series XY 64 with bumper and license plate to match. <laughs> and it sure uh, hugs the turn. Yeah. Well, I don't like any of those. Well, how about our village blacksmith model here? Well, would that model be good for me? Well, it should. It stopped the Christmas tree from spreading. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. Of course, it seems so old fashioned. Yeah, but you ought to wear one, lady. I'll tell you why, because I read a little poem about it coming up the steps. And it says, when your husband's love begins to turtle, you better get yourself a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if your middle gets much bigger, buy a corset for that hourglass figure. <laughs> uh, how much is that last model? Uh, I think on the price tag it says $3, ain't it, Elmer? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. $3? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm afraid that corset wouldn't fit my budget. Well, that's all right. We can let it out a little, if you want. <laughs> well, all right, then. Try it on over my dress and see if it fits. Uh, help me get it on her, Orson. Now, look, you get on the other side and yank and yank, and I'll yank on this side. <laughs> oh, 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 wait a minute. Stop, stop. I just can't stand this yank. You look at the Cincinnati Reds, lady. <laughs> This is my husband. I hope he likes it. Hey, what's going on around here? A corset. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, how do you like this corset on me, dear? Don't you think it brings out my eyes? No, it don't. Pull, Orson, and we'll bring him on a little more. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, I, I, I think I'll take this corset. Give the man three dollars. Yeah, and lady, the three dollars includes the tax. Wait a minute. What's the tax for? That's what uh, holds the corset together. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. Three dollars for a corset for my wife. That's a lot of money. Well, that's a lot of wife. <laughs> Just between you and me, bud, I'm not interested. You're not going to get any three dollars out of me. Now, scram. Oh, well, that's all right, mister. Uh, poor Larson. We'll squeeze it out of his wife. <laughs> <laughs> We feel in this next act, friends, we discovered a new style of harmony group that you've never heard before. I'd especially like to call your attention to the lovely voice of the young lady. But just here I am rambling on, taking up good time when you're playing to check up on me. Marie Jean and her merry men. <laughs>
Everybody likes it, and they're going to be a big hit. Mr. Friends, Arlene Harris is moving into a new house, and when you do that, there's bound to be trouble. Bound to be something doing. Arlene's a grand little neighbor, though. <laughs> she keeps her nose to the grindstone, her shoulders to the wheel, and her ears to the wall. Telephone ringing. Where is the phone? Oh, dear, that's called moving in a new house. You never know where things are. What's that? I have my hand on it. <laughs> now, my dope. I thought it was a vacuum cleaner. Oh, that's me. Always looking for something to pick up a little dirt. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, Maisie. What do you mean, how does the new house look? Right now, it looks terrible. You're just moving in. The other men are just moving the furniture in now. Oh, boy, will you see the curtains? Are they something? Well, the people who bought the house and I guess left them up as a favor. Yeah, a favor to themselves, I think. Oh, they're terrible, Maisie. Houses are drapes of wrath. Is that a kid? What color are they? Well, I take another look. Oh, they're a cream color. The cream started to curdle. <laughs> yeah. Hold the line just a minute, Maze. How I show the men where the stuff goes, dear. Some of that goes upstairs. Don't have them jumping everything in the middle of the living room floor. Wait a minute, Maisie. They're bringing my piano in. I want to show the boys where to put it. Uh, boys, that piano comes right in here, please. Right over the next corner. Hey, you, mister. Jimmy, Billy, or whatever your name is. You with the muscles. Circle my walls, will you please? Oh, just a minute, boys. Don't leave it there. I don't like it there. No, it cuts out the light. Look, will you try it over that little alcove, please? You don't think it'll fit? Oh, well, don't try to squeeze it in. Oh, dear. Well, look, bring it down on this wall, do you mind? And put the top up. No, that won't do it. Still shows that crack in the plaster. Oh, dear. Now, hold it a minute, and I'll try to think where to put it. What do you mean you've been holding it for five minutes? Well, what difference does it make? You're getting paid by the hour, aren't you? Oh, well, drop it any place. I'll decide later. Well, that's fine stuff, I must say. Now, on your own time, pick it up and stack it to the fireplace. <laughs> Good night. Oh, Maisie? No, I didn't drop the phone. The boys were looking for a place to drop the piano. Yeah, I'll say they did. They piled it up alongside of the fireplace. Oh, well, now we're all set for the housewarming. <laughs> well, that thing was on its last legs anyway. Maybe we'll get a new one now. Yeah, hold the line just a minute, Maisie. Harry, will you mind taking your feet off the new furniture, please? What do you mean it's too short? That's not a sofa. Harry, that's a love seat, so get out of it. Now, leave it alone, dear. Don't pull it out. It blows back in the corner. You don't put a love seat with a light beside it. What's the matter with you? Have you ever seen a park bench with a street lamp over it? What's that? What did you say? Too bad there wasn't a light over the bench where we met. Oh, is that so? I suppose you wouldn't have pushed me. Or maybe you think I didn't get a shock when the policeman flashed his light on you. <laughs> Oh, I'm talking to Harry, maybe. He's curled up in a new love seat, tighter than a new permanent. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, just a minute, maybe. What is it, Junior? For goodness sake, how did you get your clothes in such a mess? 
The dog jumped over you with his dirty paws. Oh, mud all over that dog will be the death of me. Don't jump in the tub. Hurry up, dear. And no jackknife dives either. How I wish you'd get rid of that dog. We don't need a watchdog. A watchdog, my foot. If it's a nose at night, I'll bark. Well, then I'll write you bark. Your bark's worse than my bite any day. Oh, it's that dog of Harry's, Maisie. He eats us out of house and home, and Harry won't get rid of him. I don't know what kind of a dog is it. I think it's a cross between a pointer and a setter. Yeah, it sets all day and points at the icebox. <laughs> Absolutely. Wait a minute, Maisie. Junior, what are you doing back to Cindy? Had your bath already? What do you mean it was too crowded? There's a strange man in the tub. What's he doing there? He says he lives here. For heaven's sake, Maisie, I'll call you back. Harry's moved us into the wrong house. Well, if all the... Looks... <laughs> well, that could happen to us. Well, it's only one, couldn't it? <laughs> a lot of our friends consider our program as a fun show. But we want you to know that we're mighty proud of our music, too. And we believe we've discovered another new hit for this series. As I said at the opening of the show, I think we're going to enjoy the singing of Don Reed. Come on out, Don. <laughs> Like you, Don. Now go out and have a good cry for yourself. You feel better. 
go out somewhere and relax and cool off, as the saying goes. Oh, uh, say, Al, there's one thing we can all do if we want to relax and cool off and sort of take it easy. Just drink a glass of gold pineapple juice. It's just a thing for you. Mothers usually serve it to their children after they put in a hard day's play. It helps restore some of the energy that active children burn up so rapidly. And grown-ups, too, are finding that this taste-tempting beverage can't be beaten when a cool, tangy drink is demanded. Because gold pineapple juice comes from fresh, sun-ripened pineapples, grown in the warm, rich soil of Hawaii, picked when the fruit is just right, and then a quick trip to a spotless cannery in Honolulu, and this natural, unsweetened pineapple juice is on its way to your refrigerator with every bit of its nature-given flavor intact. It brings the bright, golden sunshine of Hawaii right into your home. You know, it's a smart idea to have several cans always on hand. So be sure to order Dole, D as in delicious, O-L-E, Dole Pineapple Juice, on your very next visit to your grocer. Oh, Al. <laughs> Al, don't look now, but I think you're in for a lot of trouble. What do you mean? <laughs> Here comes Billy House, and he's got a whole collection of birds. Birds in the studio? <laughs> you can't do that, Billy. Hell no. Al, they're all my pets. I, I take them with me wherever I go. Come here, Bessie. Al, I want to be Bessie, my wild turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure that's a wild turkey? Turkey's wild. You'd be wild, too, if they moved Thanksgiving up a week on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Billy, I don't want to be an old meanie, but you'll have to get those pets ears out of here. Oh, just a minute, Al. I, I know how to soften your heart. Al, uh -huh. look at that cage with those two little itchy, bitchy lovebirds. Uh, <sighs> they are pretty, all right. Uh, why do you call them lovebirds? Uh, because the male bird spends all his time telling his mate how he loves that. Look, he's cuddling her now. Listen. I love you. <laughs> well, <laughs> that bashful little fellow, isn't yeah. he? He's I. <laughs> Billy, what's that uh, looking over your shoulder there? Uh, uh, don't mind her, Al. That's Millie, my pet ostrich. Mm -hmm. If you've got a minute, I'll tell you a sad story of her life. If it's a minute, I, I'll go for it. Well, here it goes. A little fuzzy, but good. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a little ostrich named Mildred. Mm -hmm. She was an orphan ostrich. And at the very early age, she was forced to go out and work on an ostrich farm, lay an egg. <laughs> well, the first, the very first year, or first day, rather, she sat down, went right to work, and laid her first egg. Mm -hmm. And I know just how she felt now. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you should. Well, <laughs> well, Miller was just a little timid when she saw her first egg, so she said, next time I lay an egg, I'll bury my head in the sand. And she did. And who wouldn't? <laughs> and from that very day on, every time Millie would lay an egg, she would bury her head in the sand. So it came to pass that Millie laid more eggs than all the rest of the ostriches put together. And if you ever try to put a lot of ostriches together, you'll have no sense of ever that. Now, there was a very lazy ostrich working on the farm with Millie. Her name, I think, it was Edith. Mm -hmm. Now, this Edith was a proud ostrich. Once she heard that the mare was going to lay a cornerstone, and she swelled with pride, for she knew he couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, this Edith, she noticed that Millie laid her eggs on the side of the hill. So what did Edith do? Every time Millie would lay an egg, Edith would wait at the bottom of the hill, and when the egg rolled down, Edith would pounce on it and claim it for her own. Isn't that a terrible thing to do? It sure was. To look at an ostrich, you wouldn't think they could figure that out, would you? Oh, but Edith did. <laughs> And every time Millie laid an egg, she would jerk her head out of the sand and look for the egg, and it would be gone. And she couldn't understand it. Silly Millie. And that Edith, I could just wring her neck. Just sitting there at the bottom of that hill, egging poor Millie on. <laughs> but, but Millie was egotistical, and she just kept on laying eggs, and Edith just kept on giving the credit, and it went on that way by the dozen. And do you know, Al, to this very day, poor Millie doesn't know whether she laid an egg or not. But we know, don't we? <laughs> well, friends, looking at the clock, I see that our first visit of the new season together has ended. 
So I'll have to say hello to you all, for myself and the whole gang, until next week. But don't wait until next week to drink your gold pineapple juice. It's too good to wait. Just ask your grocer for that delicious gold, D-O-L-E, gold pineapple juice from Hawaii. Come on, gang. Good night. 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 Good night.